Alright, so now with Scorsese's sports film, starting with Raging Bull, timeline-wise, this movie takes place between 1941 through 1964. And within that time frame, you see DiCaprio's character from the height of his career from boxing into the descent of chaos, divorce, family, comedy, and just kind of this downward spiral of tragic stuff. Even jail, because of his own personal demons, ruined his life. It was not only interesting, but I wouldn't say fun, because he had everything, you know? He had like his brother Joey that backed him up. He had a very beautiful wife who was clearly at that point at the height not interested in him he had a family and like he had everything but what ruined it was himself he was the problem of like jealousy he already had a issue with his former wife his ex-wife right before he got with Vicky and these fights just kind of go on they even start fighting outside and he starts fighting back in the neighborhood which is totally embarrassing even other neighbors whenever he tries to touch her and abuse her the other neighbors like shut up and uh, instead of you know shutting up he's like fuck you back I'll fuck you up brother Joey always had his back he was always the guy trying to make money for both of them and these boxing scenes are pretty brutal they're good they're bloody at some point which i guess explains the black and white i have no reason why it is in black and white maybe because of the time frame 1941 through 64 i guess that's the only reason or maybe trying to get around the blood either way these boxing scenes are brutal they're good i did have a moment where i thought maybe because of these boxing matches it just kind of further affected his trauma and brain hence he's really bad in his relationship to his wife and his friends and brothers and whatnot because I don't think they go into that if they do then I just completely missed it but these boxing matches maybe correlates to him just being reckless being full of himself now he was this before again he treated his wife horribly and treating Vicky in a same way of like he's jealous he doesn't like men around her but I think you could argue that that could be correlated to him constantly getting hit in the head multiple times in the ring and then Vicky at first loves him you know it's like you know what this is a nice guy right later on clearly she's not interested beating other men to be like come over here or whatnot sees him as selfish and kind of jealous and then all of this leads up into them having this big argument about why are you around with other men and whatnot it gets to a point where Shai's in the bathroom he breaks open that door sarcastically says you know she fucked everyone including your brother Joey now I don't think she actually did it because she said it sarcastically you know in a way to provoke him he like gets out of the house tries to stop in midway trying to go to Joey's house once he gets there beats him up knocks out Vicky as well and all of this because she just said it he doesn't even know if it's true or not because he's so jealous it just overtakes him and kind of ruins the relationship between him vicky and joey and again this is a point in the film where he's at the height of his career he has a championship belt he's like a draw everyone wants to you know fight him or whatnot joey doesn't really have his back and wants to stay away from him vicky wants a divorce now but it doesn't get until very later on he starts losing matches the belt is taken off he gets beaten by a new boxer but claims that he still won because he didn't go down and it just goes downhill so he retires he moves to miami with his wife they're there to you know take a picture or whatnot but it is very clear once they have a kid she wants out and right after that she wants a divorce and custody of her kids and she does and so he's very much lonely at this point like running this club but then that also gets him in trouble because there was an underage girl in there sleeping with other men gets him in trouble he goes to jail for like a couple of months i think comes back out now that we're in 1964 he's doing stand-up now i guess like doing comedy stuff his weight has gained much more heavier and fatter not fun watching but it is just interesting watching this man at his height because um, heavier fatter losing his wife losing his best friend his best brother all because of him being jealous being all over himself all of it could have been avoided honestly if he wasn't selfish or jealous and was nice to vicky and nice to everyone and just wasn't a complete asshole he could have been better off you know like he wouldn't be a championship in the boxing ring or whatever but he would have retired he would have lived a very happy life would have gotten a family later on he meets his brother he forgives him but still like stay away from me maybe he's changed for the better by the looks of it but maybe he'll go back who knows so in the end raging bull is a really good movie i wouldn't say you know go out and watch it because it is kind of well maybe you should if you want to go through a person's filmography but for the casual like people who don't really care about movies i don't know yes maybe maybe i don't know but it's really good just seeing a man at his highest go to his lowest by the end of the movie because of himself he was the problem i thought it was a really good and compelling narrative for this movie so go watch it and then the color of money movie's got tom cruise and it's also about pool tournaments of pool playing pool and i guess pool is considered a sport i didn't realize that until now but one of the sports where i'm like you know what interesting to look at just doing these crazy ass trick shots obviously this movie doesn't do that it's about being the best player so you get this old man who was a former pool hustler watching tom cruise reminding him of himself being a pool hustler back in the day and so this movie is not only about pool but also seeing this man who was a former pool player pool hustler at the height of his career 
career trying to come back because of Tom Cruise it just reminded him of how much he loved it and how much he wants to come back to it while you got Tom Cruise who's got a you know pretty big ego really overconfident and then his girlfriend Carman in the mix trying to do some things trying to get money for both of them and also music like this whole movie and like the music the soundtrack it uses as well I really liked I don't know if I was just in a really great mood whenever I was watching this movie but I just had a really fun time like good time of like listening to the music playing pool the pool sounds and everything I just had a really good time so the whole Carmen advancing towards you know the old man I thought no don't turn this into you know love triangle affair bullshit I don't like that that's one of the worst tropes ever and I'm glad it didn't because while she's making these advances towards him being naked and looking at him in the mirror watching each other I fucking each other and whatnot I liked how at a certain point where he's like hey stop doing that you have you know Tom Cruise we're both trying to do this for him and he just cut that shit off which I do like I was like thank god this didn't turn into that or else it would have been really stupid because of this rift between the two clearly it sets up them facing off each other by the end and I just didn't want it to be you know Carmen this affair bullshit Tom Cruise is kind of the polar opposite of the old man where he's trying to prove to himself that he's being the best still at his age while Tom Cruise up and comer new face trying to prove that he is the best in the world at pool and pool hustling and with that you get him being you know having this big ego being overconfident until so the older gentleman is like you know what screw this I'm gonna mess with him a little bit use him a little bit and then by the end it is revealed that he did use Tom Cruise in a way to get back into pool but also get into the tournament with him as well so in the end it's a win-win for both of them and then you get the old guy I'm so sorry for calling him the old guy I don't remember his name I've been calling him the old man throughout this whole video apologies for that but his wife I think Janelle comes in and being like why are you doing this because he really wants this and just has to leave his whole family and wife just to go with Tom Cruise and Carmen but then she comes back later on to support him and then finally the face off which ends with them starting their face off by the end you know arguing and money talking all that stuff despite the tournament ending he's like you know what let's have a face off who's better you or me the new kid on the block or the old experienced person they play pool they start it and that's how the movie ends there's this whole like tournament thing and like him quitting in a way that part's good and we get that a little bit just not quite so i guess in a way it ends at the height of the narrative of the new school and old school facing off but ends on that part so in the end the color of money was a fun time again i think the combination of music the sport itself and the characters had me in a really good ass mood and that love affair bullshit was cut off thank god and even the sport itself so fun to watch i guess it's my takeaway as well but also a man who's you know seemingly about to go out of pool comes back in to prove that he still got it while on the polar opposite you got tom cruise coming in being like i'm new and i'm the best so i had a really great time watching this movie and that was it for Scorsese's sports films. Both of them are pretty damn good. I did not expect to like either of them because of sports. You know, I'm not really into sports, but never knew that pool was a sport. So that kind of took me by surprise. And boxing as well. Fun to watch, but I'm not really into it. But the core of the movie is a man ruining his own life with some, you know, good black and white blood here and there during the boxing scenes. While on the flip side, Color of Money, you got a young Tom Cruise being overconfident while you have his mentor and his old man being the experienced one teaching him the ways but also using him to get what he wants and ends on the height of their face off so really two good movies so that's it for me this has been the world so far and thank you for watching